Hello my darlings, welcome to the new masterclass for Summer by Vivaldi. I recently created a poll on my channel asking you which piece you would like to learn first, Summer by Vivaldi or the Autumn Song by Tchaikovsky and more people wanted to learn how to play Summer and this is why I'm creating this masterclass for you. You can download the sheet music for both pieces on my Patreon page and we're going to start with the first movement. So here you have different options. I like trying all kinds of different fingerings. It's really fun. It also helps you stay flexible and create. We have three eights as a time signature, which means that you count one, two, three. One, two, three. Here we can start in the first position. Also start in the third position, for example. Then go back into the second position. Then go into the third. For example, there are lots of possibilities, so I encourage you to explore all of them and find the best possible fingering for you. We carry on in the fourth measure. shift into the second position. Make sure all your movements are really smooth and when you shift you always move your arm up. It's never your fingers or your wrist, it's always the whole arm. Back into the first position and third position. And here you can play the E flat with a third finger in the second position and stay there. And this is a very long note, that's why move slowly, move your arm very, very slowly. Otherwise, you won't have enough bow. You can also play it in a second position. Make sure to stretch your fourth finger because it's F sharp. If you decide to play in the second position, that is, or you can play the whole thing in the first position. And then you shift into the second or into the third position, whatever you choose. So third position would be... If you choose the second position here, then you could shift into the third position, measure 16. If you play the whole thing in the third position, you have the disadvantage of playing the C with the fourth finger on the D string, which is a little bit unusual and not necessary in this case. Find out what works best for you. I would probably choose first position here. Then shift into the third. Again, very, very slow arm. All your movements are smooth and slow. And even when they're fast, they can be smooth. In the third position, and then first. Third position. Four. You could play 
example here so that you can shift into the third position you could shift in maybe 30 if you like I would probably stay in the first let's try the whole thing again you could start on the D string the second finger which is uh, fourth position then second position the second finger on the D string and stay there you shift into the third position and then you start it goes much faster of course when you practice it, it's very useful to always stress the first note. In this case, also the B flat, because this is kind of how the melody goes. The cuckoo, let's try it. But only when you're practicing. You play fast, you don't play. This is only when, when you practice. And then when you play fast, then you just... It helps you to play rhythmically when you practice that way. That's why I highly recommend it. Now I'm going to try and find out which fingering works best. In this case, it's third position works best for me because the first position totally unnecessary string crossing we don't want too much movement because it goes very fast so let's stay in a third position on the D string here and practice slowly you can leave the first finger on a string actually fourth finger as well and the third finger comes and goes position and then you go down to the first position here again you leave the third finger on the string and the second finger keeps coming and going same thing like in the third position but we're in the first position and both fingers, first finger and the fourth finger, are low because we have two flats in the key. In this case, it's B flat. When you practice intonation, you could actually practice double stops here. helps you to play in tune and playing in tune is the most important thing I would say do it really slowly if you feel insecure you can just go compared with the open G string slowly we're not in a hurry I'm going to carry on from measure 34 or here make sure the first and fourth fingers they're low and the third finger is right next to the fourth finger they're together We shift into the second position. Practice it slowly first. When you shift, you keep your finger on a string. And then when you arrive 
you press the string down again. Your finger is always in a string. If you keep pressing the string down, it will sound like this. And we don't want this sound. We don't want to hear it, right? That's why it's so important to let go of the pressure. Practice it often enough, end result will be inaudible. You won't be able to hear the shift, and that's your goal. Let's try again. Again, you keep one and four on A and D strings, and the third finger keeps coming and going. Keep your finger on a string, but let go of the pressure. This is what it sounds like when you practice it. When you practice it right, if you keep the pressure, that's what it would sound like. You don't want that. You want this. So make sure to practice it a lot until it will start happening automatically, but you have to do it many times before that happens. Let's try that again. And then carry on. And measure 39. We're in the third position. First and fourth fingers are on a string. And the third one keeps coming and going. Here. We keep the first and second fingers on the string. And the fourth one keeps coming and going. Then you can shift into the fourth position. The hard thing here, it might seem hard to you if you've never done it before, is to put the first finger on both strings. You could also stay in the third position and play it with the second finger. It might be easier to shift into the fourth. So if you play from measure 40, shift into the fourth position. Make sure to put the finger on both strings so that you don't have to keep jumping from one string to another. You have to really practice this. And if you practice the double stops, it will help to polish up your intonation. Create a ring exercise. You know what ring exercise is? Is when you keep repeating the same thing over and over again. You start from beginning, go to the second measure and come back. Yeah? So you create like a loop. And try again. Okay, and carry on. Make sure to keep the first finger on both strings. It should look a little bit flatter than usual because if it's round, then it will only land on one string. And with flat, I don't mean low, but the finger itself, it's flat. Here we keep first and second fingers on a string and the third one comes and goes. Now, First finger goes up to the second finger. And then we shift again into the fifth position this time. Remember to keep the first finger on a string, on both strings actually, because it's a fifth. 
F and C. Practice it many times. Also try double stops. And then try again. And don't try to play a Vajere here because it won't sound like anything because your first finger is on the string, okay? So you would actually have to lift up your first finger <laughs> which doesn't make any sense, especially in this fast tempo. We're very fast. That's why we want to save energy. No unnecessary movements necessary. <laughs> so let's try. Here we keep first and second fingers on a string and again practice double stops. Adjust your fingers. Make sure your violin is always in tune. I'm in measure 44 right now. And we play the whole thing either in the middle of the bow or slightly lower, definitely not here. And make sure your hand is relaxed. Yeah? Your wrist is always very soft and relaxed. And the first finger goes up to the second one. The F turns into an F sharp. And here again, we practice double stops. Practice it many times. Here you could go to the first position. some different options. We were in the fifth position. Go into the third position. Try all kinds of crazy things. Be creative and be flexible. It's a lot of fun. It keeps you constantly like in a flow. You don't get stuck with one fingering one, one kind of way of playing a piece. There are so many different ways. At some point you will make up your mind and you will write down your fingering and stick with it if you want to learn the piece. But then after playing it for a couple of months or a couple of years even, you come up with a new solution. You come up with a new fingering. It's really fun to do it like that. Depending on what you decided, you carry on and measure 45, either in the first position or in the third, even fourth position is possible. Just find your own best fingering. I'll carry on playing in the third position for now. the first then you could jump into the fourth position play carry on playing the D and A strings which is a bit crazy but it's fun Here would be first position, then measure 49. 